Okay, so I got a call this morning from Spider and he called me up and he's like, bro, the tractor is here. <laughs> he was like, you know, I spoke to him and next thing I knew he was here. So he said, shall I hold him off? And I was like, yeah, I'm coming now, I'm coming now. So I quickly get ready, get out of the house and I drive here. And just as I'm pulling in, the tractor is pulling out and I'm thinking, ah, oh, man, I've missed it. But um, I came in to find that the tractor, the tractor has, um, he did like a, he did like one line, you know, one line of soil turning. The man who was driving the tractor said to Spider that the soil was still hard. So we're waiting for one more, one more rainy day. So after the next rain, he will come back and he will finish the whole ground. Um, but I will show you, I will show you. Hey, I have to show you. Uh, I just missed it. I just missed it fiddling around with this camera, trying to get it. Hey, this donkey was just rolling around in the mud. I've never seen a donkey just turn like that. This is what the tractor came and done. And you know, it feels nice and fluffy. This soil, I can tell it's good. But he was saying that deeper down, like the machine should be able to dig deeper down. And it's getting stuck at a particular, at this layer here. So, um, when the next rain comes, it should soften it up even more and we can get deeper and that should help. The process when we start sowing the seeds. From what I understand, there is a hard layer and, you know, this process is to soften the soil. It's to get to that deeper level and allow, um, and because that soil will be a lot easier for the seeds to germinate and break through than the hard soil that's been sitting there for many, many years. So we're preparing that soil to be more fertile so those seeds can germinate and, and, they, will, and they will produce the plants that we need them to, to produce. So for today, today is just about continuing to to get this place clear now I had no idea the tractor would be here today and it shows you you know where we're at with this and we should really have it cleared by now right here at the top there's still a lot of um, twigs and rubbish around so this is what we're focusing on today yesterday that cashew section it got handled it got handled and today um, We've hired, uh, we've hired a chainsaw man to come and deal with some of the big cashew branches that need to come down. Because at the moment, as, as I explained before, there are, you know, there's development happening around this area. And so people need access. And, you know, we don't want them to be coming through the farm, which is what has been happening before, because it's just been empty space. So, now, if we're going to put a fence up and close this off for the farm, then we need to provide access. So we have the road. So we're so we're preparing the road, and we're gonna you know clear the road. And we also need you know um, high vehicles, you know the the lorries and the tractors. We need um, them to be able to get through. And right now, with some of these branches on the cashew trees. Um, just behind me here it's not gonna be possible so they're coming down today and um, and yeah we get closer we get closer but before I get started with all of this I need to get some breakfast because I've not eaten and that's a lot of work there's a whole bunch of clearing to do so um yeah i'm gonna go find me some mangoes have some breakfast and then we're gonna get back to work
Jarana I mean Jagana. He's Balde. He's Balde. Oh, it's his name. Yes. Okay, okay. This is four day Balde. Four day. Uh, this one is now got to the top. Osman Jagana. Osman. Okay. Gajaga. Ah, Gajaga. Okay. Gajaga. Osman Gajaga. Gajaga. Okay, so um, the cashew trees have been trimmed and now, as you can see, the shade is gone, well, still there a little bit, but a lot of the shade is gone, especially on that side that they're trimming down right now. And um, now there's going to be a whole lot of room for lorries and cars to come through on this way. And cashew leaf tea, anyone? Let me know because we we can be sending a whole bunch of cashew leaf tea your way. So, as well as trimming these branches and collecting the leaves for cashew leaf tea. There is also the obvious benefit of the cashew nuts. And so this is what we collected from the branches that we cut down. Hey, Ibrahima. Yes, Karim. He's cooking yes. cashew. Mm So cashew nuts actually contain a natural toxin called urushal and due to this the cashews are processed in a way that makes them edible and usually that way is to cook them um, in order to burn the toxin known as urushal. This substance is a clear liquid that exists with inside the, the cashew shell and it's the same substance that is found in poison ivy. Um, interestingly enough, poison ivy and the cashew tree share the same family species of plants. The cashew nut shells are also one of the most abundant forms of tropical biomass. And as you can see when they're cooking, they, they are highly flammable and this gas can be used for energy generation. I've noticed there's a little bit of, uh, I don't want to say a movement, but there is some attention well, being placed on cashew processing, Whee! as if it is something, you know, um, hazardous to human health. And, you know, I, I'm not one that's working in a cashew factory, so I'm not going to speak for people. Um, and maybe, you know, I think anything done, you know, out of balance is unhealthy, you know, no matter what it is, whether it's poisonous or not. But generally, you know, um, as a family, you know, if you're roasting cashew nuts, this can actually be, you know, um, I find these tasks very useful for families and especially if you have young children. When, when they see their parents, when they see their family members, um, cracking open the nuts and everybody gathered around and joking and telling stories. I often see that with my children, they, they love to get involved and with all children, that with met so many families that I've seen doing these kind of tasks and processing, whether it's cashew nuts, whether it's ground nuts or whatever it is, these tasks that are perceived as mundane and as monotonous, you know, when people come together, um, you know, we can really change that. and what looks like a mundane task can actually be some good quality time spent and you're teaching the children about um, how food is processed and the work that goes into it and even qualities such as patience which in these times I think is an absolute diamond
It's midday now. You can see the sun is right above me. And um yeah, this is hot. So I'm about to take a break from the raking. I'm gonna come back at sunset and we're gonna finish it all off. But yeah, it's there. The cleaning is almost done. These cashew trees have been trimmed. And so yeah, I'm gonna take a break. I'm gonna get some lunch. And then I'm gonna go do some video editing and then be back later. Until then. Okay, so the rain is here so this should be the final rain that we're after um, before the tractor returns and um, and continues to turn the rest of the soil so I was just at the farm just now I was actually at another section um, looking at a garden that is currently available for someone to manage and look after and um, and yeah I saw the clouds come in so I made a move so I wouldn't be stuck and I, it, the timing was just incredible like I had to get a few things on the way back I stopped people were starting to run you could feel the wind was coming and then just as I got in the car on the final stretch home I saw the showers starting to come down slightly I pulled in, I have a big gate, I had to open the gate and then it's got like a problem with the lock. I was there fiddling with the lock, got it closed, took off, took all the shopping from the boot and all the stuff that I had in the car, took it in and just as I got under this veranda, just as I stepped here, it just fell. Like the timing was just, like it was waiting, you know. <laughs> a baraka, huh? a baraka. Um, we give thanks. This is why we need a fence. Good day, my people. So, you may remember that we cut down many of the lower branches from these cashew trees right here on the farm we were trying or we are making room for vehicle access on this side here and also we're making it so more lights can come onto the ground so it's less shaded in this farm area so Many of the big branches have been cut down from these cashew trees, all of the lower, the lower region. And we had piles and piles of branches, twigs and cashew leaves, apples and cashew nuts lying around all about the place. So um, what's going to happen, these, these sticks have been, these branches have been gathered, the big logs have been gathered and um, the branches and some of the thicker twigs all of them have been gathered and um, they are in this pile here that I'm about to show you and the pile now is protected by a lot of the branches and leaves so you won't actually be able to see but um, in this pile right here there is a stack of logs cashew logs that will be used um, 
to make coal because coal is the fuel yeah i'll turn around so you can see the pile that's the pile there coal is the main fuel that is used for cooking here generally people tend to kind of to make a big meal once a day in this community so um, maybe twice maybe there could be some kind of porridge but generally a big meal once a day and that will be used from a coal open coal fire um, and they're usually you know it's usually a, a big pot of food enough to feed a lot of people within the community so you know coal is something that's used frequently and um, this is you know a great way of recycling the resources here on the farm turning it into coal and there now you have free cooking fuel for a long time Kasu is a tree mm -hmm. that every year, what we do with it is like we trim it, mm -hmm. okay, at least cut down the lower branches, okay, and then use them as firewood, mm -hmm. okay. If the branches are big, you can also burn them and make them cold, mm -hmm. you know, that also is for cooking and stuff, okay. Normally, the big logs will have to go in the center of it, you form a circle, okay, and then put the big logs and then the bigger logs. Like as the biggest will be in the center, and as you come out, they become smaller mm. until you have a pile of cut wood all round. But as you come out from the circle, you have a smaller wood going mm. on. Okay. And then you create a center, a provision in the center where you will start the fire. Okay. And then after that, you put you you will look for zinc. Mm. And when I say zinc, those are the the corrugated zinc okay and then you cover it with it okay, okay. To, to to allow the heat to remain in uh -huh. the wood. because remember they are not dry wood yeah they are freshly cut fresh wood okay yeah. so in order for them to burn because uh, you know you have to create that environment for the yeah. heat to remain so yeah. that it can dry up quickly and burn down okay okay so when you cover it with the zinc mm -hmm. you put some leaf on top of the zinc mm -hmm. and then the, you put the sand on it. Okay. Okay. So that's what we've done. So what happened is like the zinc. The What's zinc the leaf? The leaf for? They use the cashew leaf. Yeah. So to keep. To keep the heat. Yeah, to keep the heat. Okay. So you know sometimes we are using the whole zinc. Mm -hmm. So to avoid uh, heat penetrating from the holes within the zinc. Okay. okay. The leaf. It's an extra yeah, exactly extra protection. protection, you know, yeah. to keep the fire inside the wood. Okay. So now that the fire is all burnt out, mm -hmm. now all we have is charcoal. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so you charcoal, know that it's burnt out how? Because they stop smoking. Yes. Because as you as it go on, you see, you can see that you know it, it drop in. Yeah. Okay. And then the way it was, it is not like that now. Okay. Okay. So. You know, as it is coming out, when you take the cover out, you will see the charcoal. So they will be in big bundles. So you okay. can crush them and make them into a sizable one. Okay. And, and then you have your that. charcoal. Mm -hmm. And that's like. I know. understand in the UK, people will have to mine the coal for them yes. to cook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. If you tell people that you are mining coal here, they won't understand. I've never seen coal mining. Mm. But here, we take the branch, the wood, and, and create it. Mm -hmm. you know? So it's a, it's a it's a skill for yeah. some people here. Yeah. Some people, their work is to do that. And it's a very sustainable skill because you're using what's on the land, what we've cut down for the farm, in order to make way, in order to you know give sunlight for the crops. Exactly. Instead of wasting, so that's not waste. Yeah, or it is recycled. And right. it's being recycled here on the land, on the here, land here for here, the community. Yeah. And then what so. happens is also uh, where you make the charcoal, mm. plants can grow very cool there. 
plants can grow in there okay very nicely yes like in this area like here in this area oh so this could be used as like a, a nursery exactly uh, okay. you can use the place as a nursery place yeah and then it's it's okay you know mm -hmm. so like uh, it's one way yeah of at least keeping wood that are cut from trees yeah in in use yeah okay because you might not be able to use all of them as firewood yeah so as charcoal you can bag them and keep them until in the rainy season yeah in the rainy season it's very hard to have dry wood mm. okay mm -hmm. so but if you have a charcoal a bark of charcoal stored in yeah you will not need to look for firewood yeah to cook with yeah as you know majority of the people in the community will use firewood to cook yeah okay. i've seen coal used a lot as well exactly yeah so if there is no charcoal if there, if there is no wood yeah. obviously there is this availability of charcoal yeah and then imagine a bag of charcoal costs 175 to 200 dollars mm -hmm. in the community here mm -hmm. if you go into the city area yeah. it's about 300 to 350 dollars for the for a bag of charcoal right so obviously some people are using this yeah as a way uh, uh, as a business yeah okay yeah if you have trees in your home you know because cashews can overgrow in in a period of time yeah like next year if you look at this cashew the branches will be low again mm -hmm. so you will have more wood to cut mm -hmm. and turn into charcoal okay you okay. could either sell it yeah. or you keep it in your household for household use okay okay mm -hmm. so that's that's it okay so now he now, now what he is doing he's clearing the environment okay where the charcoal when the charcoals come out yeah you know they can they can they can you will have a space where you can have the the coals okay okay, okay. So, so he's going to rake the yeah, earth the down area, yeah. until he gets to the the coal the coal exactly and then bring, okay and then slowly okay so okay when they come also we have to have water around yeah because they will still you know you, you can still see some smokes okay so which means they are not completely off yeah so before you put it in a bag because we are using plastic bags to yeah. put them in yeah so you have to make sure that the plastic bags you know the, is properly off okay okay because sometimes we see the incidents where people will bag up their charcoal yeah not knowing that it's not completely off uh. and they go home before they come it's all burnt out into ashes oh that happens most of the time okay okay the plastic so, melt yeah so the yeah. plastic melt and you have to make it. sure that yeah, it's but, finished burning yeah exactly so that's it and then yes i we've done you see as you can see that side there mm. we did one group in there you see most of the trees that we don't need we want to build a house you cut down the tree you you don't have to find a way to throw to away to throw out this uh, uh this wood or the logs mm. uh, you can always bring somebody who has experience in bringing them together mm. and then turn them into charcoal okay yeah, this is what you did here you say yeah it's here oh here yeah, 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 yeah. You know? okay and then also okay. i have a friend who also is building over there yeah he cut down about five kasu trees okay so those kasu trees are also going to be turned into kasu into fire into 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 coal okay so okay. maybe in, in very soon we are starting that then we will cover the whole process yeah as how it is done yeah from gathering it yeah how it is gathered the arrangement of the wood okay from okay. the smaller yeah to the bigger or from the bigger to the smaller that would be good and how they cover it also mm -hmm. and then how they start the fire from the top part of it okay and then how the fire will burn within inside mm -hmm. until the whole thing is burnt into coal okay yes mm -hmm. so that's it that's how we do it you know okay very yeah. interesting very good. so that's what um so this area then Will you reburn on these parts, or are you thinking you can grow? You can start yeah, to grow. What, what happens is like you know, outside the rainy season now, mm -hmm. you know, we can do our nurseries yeah. on that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So if we don't do the nursery on it, people will come and take the sand from here yeah. to go and put it on their nurseries. Ah, okay, okay, okay. They will use that. They will use the sand yeah. to go and make nurseries on it. Okay. You see? Mm -hmm. Something like that.
Yes, people. Okay. So, um, I'm back in the farm after maybe a week or so. I was thinking, as you would have maybe heard in some of the previous video, that we would have been planting by now. But that is not the case. And um, we've actually been told to, to wait because the rain is not usual. Um, we're waiting really for um, some more solid rain. But actually just now we received a message from an elder that the rain um, is very unusual at the moment. And it's very interesting to me because right now as I'm speaking, um, I've noticed, I've seen that there's um, a flood there's a there's like flooding happening in London and um, you know um, just in general what we're seeing with um, just in general what we're seeing with um, the weather there's some very unusual activity and to me you know I think there's something to be concerned at here in regards to um, uh, weather manipulation and you know there's been all kinds of extreme weather happening around the world we've seen um, mudslides in the Caribbean we've seen mudslides in Japan and um, and in the in East Asia and um, and we've even seen similar things in in India and the one of the storms that took place here in Gambia um, this, one of the storms that took place here in Gambia recently um, people have saying they've never seen a storm like that in their lifetime you know that's a huge thing in their whole lifetime they haven't seen a storm like that um, the, it, the storm was heavy and many people's roofs were taken off um, where I live um, in the town center the whole marketplace the, the roof of the marketplace was blown off trees had fallen um, my neighbor's brick wall brick wall fell down there was bricks all over the road I saw big baobab trees with you know big heavy branches that had snapped from the power of this wind so Weather manipulation is something that I've been aware of, aware of for a long time. So, you know, it's nothing new. We see chemtrails happening all the time. But, um, you know, just with these events that have taken place now and in the times that we're in, for the elder to come and tell us that, you know, be careful because the rainy season, how it started is not normal. It's very interesting to me. So at the moment, we're kind of holding off um, I'm, I'm guessing it's a more consistent rain that we need before we start planting but anyway um, staying optimistic and we're gonna do our best we're gonna you know um, we're gonna do this regardless and um, and we will respond to whatever the challenges are but I've just come to the farm today and I haven't been here um, for about a week now and my goodness I'm gonna show you now it's just grown like <laughs> the grass is high the bu there's bushes like so many of the medicinal plants that I was talking about they're up um, man like I think it's really grown re re very very quickly so it's given me a good sense of what it can be like when we start planting and how quickly we can see growth in this kind of climate okay yes so excuse my face i've just finished eating i just arrived here and um i heard that the the coal is being bagged up the process is finished let me go greet the uncle who was doing it he's been preparing all of this coal but I'm just coming here to show you I'm burping and everything, excuse me. Uh salam alaikum. Sumole. Yeah, Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Ah, uh, you're gonna start another one. Yeah. This with this one here, these branches. Uh, 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 in, in, inside that fence. Okay, okay. Yeah. Ah, I see, I see. Yeah. Okay. So this is what has been bagged up already. Wow. Well, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 5, 10, 15, 20, <clears throat> 25 bags of coal. And this is interesting. This one didn't quite make it. Wow, and even more on this side. Yeah. It's really great to see these kind of techniques, taking notes, and um, you know, this is something that definitely a good tradition to be passing down and carrying on um, to be sustainable with your energy consumption and to be sustainable, to reuse, to use what's on the land, to save money, um, to not, you know, constantly be having to go outside where companies are exploiting resources. Just so many good reasons and so many important reasons, important points. And um, yeah, it's great to see it. It's a good example. And um, just makes me realize, makes me more aware that I'm in the right place and I'm doing the right things. Yes, family. So it's now the beginning of August, and um, the rainy season is like in full swing. We've just had like four to five days straight of rain, and this is the first gap in the day that I've seen. And um, that's why I'm out and I'm I'm back now here in the farm. Um, I'm gonna show you what it looks like. It's you know, it's really you can see how things are growing. So I think it's definitely time to plant. Um, we plan to bring the tractor back because the soil is is soft, it's moist, it's ready, it's fertile. So um, you know, we want to bring the tractor back now and, um, and and really start planting. We're definitely late into the season, but um, it looks like it's finally here. Um, right now I'm just going to get some herbs because a lot of people in the community are unwell and just now myself um, I felt something coming on um, so I'm going to get some of the herbs from the the medicinal garden that I said I wanted to leave and preserve and I'm going to bring them to boil for everybody and um, you know hopefully that will do the job to um, assist us through whatever is happening. I think there's a mixture of different things taking place. You know, um, we've been talking about chemtrails. We've been talking about a lot of the pollution. You know, what is in the water here? Many people drink, uh, you know, relying on tap water here. And um, I think, you know, that is a way that we know in which the, the system can get us um, so we have to definitely be careful and we need to put systems in place to avoid these types of poisons and um, but for right now the medicine is here so we will do our best and we will keep it strong but um, I'm going to show you what it's looking like here and um, very soon we hope to be planting so this is the Mama Konkoyo 
I am going to take them off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hold Look at you, daddy boy. Hold this. Hold it properly. Hold it properly. So this is what the farm is looking like now. As you can see, all the herbs, all the plants are growing and some of them very tall. Donkeys are eating there. It's like another, a whole new place, transformed. So they are helping me take the mama kunkweyo. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Mama Kunkoyo. Mama Kunkoyo. We have finally got the tractor down here because the rain since August started has been heavy. Um, you know, there was a point where every day the rain has been coming. Only the last maybe two days there there hasn't been rain um so we're expecting more rain um we have the tractor come down today to plow the field so finally now the whole farm has been plowed i say the whole farm there are sections that haven't been done which which we're happy about the medicinal garden the medic medicinal plant section and around some of the cashew trees but um I will show you now here, here, you can see here I'm walking on it, I'm walking on the ploughed field and it is ready, ready for the seeds to be dropped in there, you see that, 70 by 50 ready to go, so I think we're going to, to go ahead and, um, and start planting these groundnuts, we will be using the donkey and the machine and you know it's unfortunate i didn't get i wasn't here i wasn't here when the tractor arrived so i really wanted to get some footage of that but um yeah it's just it's been so busy at the moment i couldn't wait here i didn't know it was going to happen at this moment um and they turned up at the time when i wasn't here so i wasn't able to get that footage but um i will definitely be here for the planting the seeds that is something I have to be here for um, so when that is arranged I will be, we will be back and I just look forward to to put in our produce in the soil and I think we're gonna have I think we're gonna have a lot more a lot more space to plant you know other things so it'll be interesting to see what else we can do during this season yes until then um, we won't be we won't be fencing the place either because we don't have time for that at the moment um, and as we are in the heart uh, of the rainy season we are like right in the middle of it now um, we've been told i've been told that many of the animals are being kept away so there are so many plots of land like this that aren't fenced and people are and people farm on them um, and it's been happening like this for a very long time so I trust that and um, you know we'll just need people keeping on watch so we we'll have to make sure we're organized and that um, you know people are watching to make sure the crops don't get destroyed but eventually we definitely will have the fence put up and we will make we're even looking at putting a water system in place so we can continue to farm all year round after this rainy season has finished but yes we are getting there and we are getting started onto the next section the seeding